So our work today is RMB, a Ray and Guarnis adaptation framework for energy efficient mobile video streaming. Video streaming has been a killer application for mobile device. And uh, traditionally, there are two design dimensions for video streaming, the video bit rate and the video quality. By balancing these two aspects, we will have the uh, classic ray distortion trade-off. However, for mobile video streaming, there's another equally dis important design dimension, the mobile energy. So what kind of energy we are talking about we have done a ex, uh, measurement for the video streaming session over Wi-Fi, and then we find that the display energy and the transfer energy for mobile device is the, is the most um, power consuming one, which totally take 87% of the device energy. So we're gonna focus on these two parts in our mobile energy study. Now I'm gonna first show you that current video streaming system using ray distortion trade-off is usually for our mobile energy issues. Um, this is a typical architecture for video streaming. At the server side, the video will be encoded into multiple bit rate and the client will dynamically uh, request a video bit rate version based on its network bandwidth and uh, for each of the video trunks. This is called dynamic adaptive streaming over HTTP or DASH. So to reduce the display energy of such a system, a common strategy is to um, first increase the luminance of the video by a scaling factor B, and then scale down the screen brightness using the same uh, scale, scaling factor. Um, the scale of the video Y prime is supposed to be very close or similar to the original video Y because of the initial video luminance compensation. But uh, the common algorithm will usually figure out what is the optimal or the minimal scaling factor that can minimize the display energy without introducing unacceptable um, distortion between Y and the Y prime. Now the problem here is that the display algorithm always compute the distortion between the scale video Y prime and the received and the decoded video at the client, the Y. It doesn't consider the distortion between the scale video Y prime and the original uncompressed video at the server side. So the encoding distortion here is actually um, ignored. Even though the um, display distortion computed by the algorithm locally is satisfied, the overall end-to-end -end distortion could be um, unacceptable. So here's an example here. We have two video. One is with low encoding distortion. The other is with median encoding distortion. If we apply them with the same brightness scaling or compensation process using the same um, factor, and uh, we'll find that the output value of the, the output value of the distortion matrix is actually very similar because of the algorithm. But if we zoom in to see the actual result, the one with the media encoding distortion is actually have some noticeable artifacts, which are the blurred text here. Probably it's too far away to see that. Um, so in our work, we will consider both the encoding and the, the display distortion from the end-to-end -end point of view. And uh, besides this, the other problem in current system is the local overhead, which we need to compute the distortion locally in the device. This kind of um, computation usually involves pixel by pixel analysis of the PSNR or SSRM. This kind of computation will introduce energy overhead, which will compromise the energy saving. So our job, so we have done an experiment that computes the um, optimal scaling factor every two seconds locally on a device. So we find that the display saving is actually 383 milliwatts. It's it's good, but uh, due to the increased processing power, which we call the rendering here, the overall energy saving of the device is reduced to 209 milliwatts, which is a 46% less of the energy saving. So the overhead is actually quite, um, quite big. So in our work, we are going to remove this kind of local computation overhead in our system. So to summarize, the goal of this paper is going to study the end-to-end -end pipeline from the video encoding to the video 
display. And we want to shift the original classic ray distortion trade-off to a new ray distortion energy trade-off, which is tailored for mobile device. Um, so we propose RMB and RAID and the brightness adaption framework. The key difference of RMB is at the server side, RMB will prepare a family of video version with the RAID distortion energy trade-off. So it will encode additional video version that are suitable for the brightness scaling to be done at the client by compensating the luminance using a set of uh, scaling factors. And uh, for each of these compensated video, it will encode them into multiple bitrate version, just like regular dash. And uh, based on this video version, we will generate a metadata file that records all the information, include the bitrate, the scaling factors, and the content features. And uh, at the client side, the key difference is that the client um, not only need to play and download a video at a certain bitrate, but it also needs to dynamically scale the screen brightness using the scaling factor associated with this video version that it's downloading. So specifically, it will have a bandwidth estimator to estimate the network bandwidth using existing algorithm. And uh, the key design of the client is this quality analyzer, which evaluates the quality of a given video version based on its encoding bit rate, based on its um, content features, and uh, most importantly, it will mimic the process of the um, display brightness scaling in order to consider the display scaling distortion. So the advantage of this quality analyzer is that we consider both the encoding and the display distortion. And the using this um, offline trend model, we can actually remove the computation distortion that needs to be repeated at the um, device locally. Um, Based on the results of this quality analyzer and the bandwidth estimator, we will have a video adapter which actually carry out the adaptation algorithm that finds out the optimal video version to be fetched. So now I'm gonna dive into the details of this key design quality analyzer. So we proceed with this operational analysis which is a traditional methodology in ray distortion analysis. It's essentially a data-driven method to obtain the model from video data. So we prepare some um, 490 source scripts and uh, we repeat the life cycle, entire life cycle of a video in our RMB system by first compensation their luminance and then do the encoding, decoding, and finally mimic the scaling of the display. And then now we will be able to compute the end-to-end -end PSNR um, between the scaled video and uh, the original uncompressed video. And this kind of peers are now consider both the encoding and uh, the display distortion. And uh, we found from our data that um, for different kinds of content, they actually have very similar trend for this um, relationship, which can be shown as an example here. The PSNR will increase with the increase of the bit rate and the scaling brightness factors. However, for the, um, um, the, the actual curve position of individual content is actually different, which is based on the content feature of the um, different contents. So we need to model this as a, um, as a model using a content feature. So due to the asymptotic trend of this um, curve, we propose to use a logistic function to do the regression analysis and the modeling here, the Q is the quality of a given video version, and the R far is the trend coefficients, and the X is the predictors, including the bit rate, the scaling factor, and the, the quantum feature. For quantum feature, we use motion feature to indicate the, how fast and how static the video is seen in the content, and also the luminance feature to indicate the, um, bright, the how bright or how dark is the original source content. So we try different sets of features and uh, to do the regression analysis and we finally figure out that by adopting all the um, content feature we will have the least fitting error. So we went ahead and uh, take this kind of model as our quality analyzer. And uh, now I will introduce the video adapter. 
we formulate the adaptation as an optimization problem where we minimize the total energy of the device um, uh, for, uh, for transmitting the, 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 the entire video which has n trunks and the constraints, the quality of individual trunks. So here the total energy includes both the transfer energy and the display energy. And for the constraint, we require both the buffer and the, the um, PSNR constraint. And uh, since the buffer and the energy could also, uh, both of these energy and uh, the buffer could be derived from the bandwidth and the bit rate. So if we know the future bandwidth of all end trunks of this video, we will be able to solve this problem um, offline. But uh, since the uh, future channel information is not available, so this is infeasible, we need an online algorithm. So we went ahead and uh, proposed a control theoretic based method called receding horizon control. And uh, the idea is that the net network bandwidth does not change dramatically over a short period. So we actually can estimate the future network bandwidth in um, a limited future steps. Let's call this edge horizons. So the idea is uh, illustrated here. So before we download the trunk N, we will obtain the current buffer status and uh, the content feature of next edge trunks and uh, we will predict the bandwidth within these limited edge steps, and uh, we will optimize the trunk version only within the edge steps, and uh, then we will download the trunk and using the first result returned by this optimization. And uh, finally, we will move the horizon ahead and uh, to repeat the number one to number four step for the trunk N plus one. So now the problem is how do we optimize the trunk version over the limited edge horizons? We propose a dynamic programming algorithm. So the idea is shown here. At a given step, we will have multiple buffer states. And for a given bit rate choice, we will have um, some new buffer state that could be evolved. And uh, each of the transition can be depicted by a link in this figure. And uh, each of the link has the associated energy utility. So um, some of this link is infeasible because the new buffer state could be overflow or underflow. So our job is to find out the path that has the minimal overall energy utility. And uh, we were gonna backtrace the path to find out the first um, optimal version for the trunk N. And uh, we implement this um, RMB system on commercial Android device, and uh, we compared it with a uh, traditional dash method without the consideration of energy, uh, such as the Google Exo player, and uh, also traditional rate-based dash and the buffer-based dash. The myopic algorithm here is essentially a greedy version of RMB that only consider the upcoming trunk without considering future end trunks, uh, future edge trunks. So. Um, we evaluate the performance of RMB over different display types, different contents, and different network environments, and we'll find that RMB can achieve a 90% of device energy reduction while achieving this um, reasonable PSNR level at uh, 39.5. And we show two examples of the Wi-Fi and the LTE case here. Um, we can see that for both cases, RMB achieve a reasonable energy reduction Although at the, at the case of LTE, the video quality is, is worse than that of Wi-Fi. And the, what we don't show here is the uh, LTE also introduced some rebuffer. Um, you can find the, the result at the paper. That should be attributed to the um, dynamics of the LTE links. We also do control emulation and the different uh, parameter in order to show the sensitivity of RMB. And uh, here is the example of the performance under different bandwidth estimation error. We manually add bandwidth estimation error into the system to see the performance under different kind of error. And uh, the, from the result, we can see that the energy performance is not quite sensitive to the uh, bandwidth estimation error. And they also achieve a comparable quality compared to the rate-based dash method. And finally, we have done some user study to compare the RMB 
user experience with the um, direct scaling on the device only. So we can see that um, RMB has a comparable performance with the no brightness scaling case, which is 100% uh, of a brightness. And uh, the, the, the minor drop of the user score could be contributed to the uh, occasional inter-trunk brightness variation. Um, this kind of brightness variation could be sometimes uh, unsmooth. This is because we don't um, have some constraining our optimization framework to restrict this kind of um, brightness variation, but this could be added as a future work. Um, here's a video demo of the RMB system. I highlight the scaling factor variation at the top. So if you can see that the variation factor is actually change, but the playback is um, relatively smooth and uh, you wouldn't see um, very annoying effect, but the luminance is actually increased here, if you can see that. And here we go, we're gonna, yeah, we have another vari variation of the brightness. So overall, the playback result is quite smooth, but uh, the energy, we can, we can save energy at the same time. So in summary, we propose RMB to address the issue of double distortion and the computation overhead in mobile video streaming system. And uh, the, the advantage of RMB is that we can save energy while with um, comparable video quality. And the most importantly, this is back compatible to Dash. So if you don't want energy saving, you can just press the option and uh, it will just simply download the version with the brightness scaling factor equal to 1.0. And uh, also we introduce some um, additional storage of the video version, but we think the, um, the, the storage should be affordable in current uh, cloud environment. And with that, I would like to thank you for your attention and uh, I'm happy to take any questions.